Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Chairman. Uh, my pleasure to present a, a Markov chain model uh, to describe the outcome of COVID-19 pneumonia that we uh, uh, performed in the Alcambria uh, network. Uh, as you know, data about the outcome of ICU patients is very uh, heterogeneous in uh, COVID-19 uh, epidemic because of various indication of ICU admission and heterogeneity of indication of mechanical ventilation. And also uh, most study was were performed very early with only short-term follow-up and a lot of informative sensor. If we look to meta-analysis, the pooled ICU admission rate is about 21%, but if you look to the numbers, it goes from 4% to more than 48%. The uh, invasive mechanical ventilation represents 69% of the cases in mean, but it goes from 29 to 94%. The ICU mortality is about 28.3%, but once again, it goes from 1 to 61%. And the mortality of patients that have been invasively mechanically ventilated is 43%, but it goes to 3.1 from 3.1. 97%. That's why it is important to have clear cut data using stabilized database in order to understand the mechanism and the data about outcome of this disease. We used uh, the prospective cohort of the outcome REA group with a full prospective data monitoring of 437 patients, uh, COVID 19 patients. Uh, we exclude a few patients with nosocomial acquisition and uh, some uh, missing states. And uh, we use for this analysis uh, 395 patients from 11 ICU, French ICUs all over France. The standard of care was quite uh, stabilized. Uh, at the very beginning of the disease, the antiviral drugs were, uh, were used as often as possible. In the group, and very importantly, we use the delayed invasive ventilation as often as possible with the use of high flow oxygenation, CPAP, non-invasive ventilation as often as possible. We uh, perform a careful monitoring of bacterial, viral, and fungal superinfection in order to, to plan early therapy in these patients. Corticoid therapy was, uh, was left at the appreciation of the attending physicians in, uh, in this uh, cohort. Uh, you look at the data, the main uh, characteristics of the patients that will be used in the Markov model. Uh, of course, there was about three-fourths of uh, male patients, age 61, most uh, a lot of patients with high BMI. Uh, the number of days between the first symptoms and ICU admission is about 10 days. The SAPS2 is 33. Uh, the starch tone score is uh, positive, is more than zero in about two thirds of the patients. Uh, CRP is quite high, lymphocyte is quite low, and as in many studies uh, in uh, ICU, the temperature of more than 38 only is uh, present in about one fourth of the cases. The treatment on day Y consists with hydroxychloroquine, lopinavirutonazivir. Uh, tocilizumab or anakinra, and you see the numbers here. And for corticosteroid therapy, initially we use corticosteroids in one fourth of the patients, 8% with low dose, and about 18% with high dose. That is to say, 20 milligrams of dexamethasone day one, day five, and then 10 milligrams of dexamethasone between day six and day 10. Uh, we used a, a Markov model as it was shown in the, in, the, in the title with six states. We will go uh, uh, in detail after and 17 possible transition. The transition were modeled using the Nelson Allen estimator for the cumulative intensities in a non parametric analysis. The risk factor associated with each transition from one state to another. Uh, where, uh, where uh, calculate and estimated using uh, separate cox models. And for each transition, a p-value of less than 0.2 was uh, retained as risk factor at the first step. And we uh, finished the, 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 the stepwise elimination using 
the Bayesian factor at the end. And the model include risk factor only for 10 out of 17 transition due to the number of patients in each uh, transition. The impact of early corticosteroid therapy was tested using a G computation approach. That is to say the probability of being at in each state under corticosteroids and its counterfactual probability and confidence interval were estimated by probabilistic sensitivity analysis methods using 500 iteration. Here is a model, and you see that uh, the number is the number of transition here, and the number in, you know, of patients that goes from one transition from one state to another. And uh, here, of course, we have invasive mechanical ventilation, non-invasive ventilation, and oxygenation, ECMO, ICU discharge, and two absorbing states that are hospital discharge and death. If you look to non-parametric estimate and the occurrence of all the state with time from time zero to time 60 of ICU admission, you look at the initial state on admission, it was non-invasive oxygenation or mechanical vent or non-invasive ventilation for two thirds of the patients, invasive ventilation initially for about 30% of the patients, and ECMO at day one for 6% of the patients. In red, you have dying patients. In orange, ICU ECMO. In yellow, ICU invasive. In green, uh, you have ICU non-invasive, and in the other green, you have ICU discharge and hospital discharge. If you start overall, the ICU population, the day 60 estimated mortality was about 34%. And in, 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 interestingly, it was largely different from ICU non-invasive non at day zero, where the mortality is about 26.9%. Uh, for patients that start at ICU invasive, it is 46%. And for patients starting uh, under ECMO, the mortality is at day 60 of 60%. If you look at the transition and the risk factors for transition, it is very traditional uh, risk factors that has been uh, uh, kept, kept in models. You see HAIS, the high SAPs, the high SOFA score, the CRP level, the, the lymphocyte count, the leukocyte count, where uh, and the Charlson score were uh, associated with all the transition. Interestingly, the use of corticosteroids was significantly associated with the, the transition from ICU non-invasive to ICU invasive. That is to say that corticosteroid delayed and negative and, and is associated with a lower risk of being invasively mechanically ventilated. There was no significant impact of any of the antiviral drugs that we used in the, in the cohort. If you look to uh, each probability of state using uh, the G computation, you have in blue the corticosteroid therapy at, at day one, and in red, the absence of corticosteroid therapy at day one. And if you look here uh, in ICU invasive, indeed, uh, the corticosteroid therapy is able to delay uh, the risk of invasive mechanical ventilation. You see it is maximal around day six. But at the end, the risk of invasive mechanical ventilation was quite uh, similar between uh, corticoid and no corticoid at day one patients. For death, there was a very small decrease in mortality when using uh, corticosteroid therapy. If you look at the numbers and at the J computation using stacked plot, you see here the risk for death, and it was 31.2 for corticosteroid patients and 33.6 for no corticoid therapy uh, patients with a difference of about 2.4% in the risk of, of dying, which is a non-significant difference. If you look to all point here, day 10, day 28, and day 60, and if you look to all the transition, 
year death, of course, you see the same results. And for hospital discharge, there was a decrease in the, the, the increase of the hospital, the rate of hospital patients hospitally discharge at day 60 of 63.9 versus 61. The interpretation using complete case and complete follow up, the day 60 mortality is very different according to the day one status in oxygenation 26%, 46%, and 60% under non invasive ventilation and oxygenation, mechanical ventilation and ECMO. Corticosteroids used at day one significantly protect against transition from non invasive ventilation and oxygenation to invasive mechanical ventilation. But the 60 benefit is not significant in only 2.7% uh, in the probability of hospital discharge and ICU death. Similar to the benefits of recovery for patients under uh, oxygen, but considerably lower than the benefit observed for mechanically ventilated patients in the recovery trial. And also in the WHO meta analysis of interrupted uh, randomized control trial but probably in line with the, with the negative trial of MedCOVID uh, that is not included in this meta-analysis. We did not observe difference between low and high dose corticosteroids, but the number are too small in order to, call to fully be sure of this result. The limitation is, of course, that the Markov model only depends on the time or, or, and state where we are at a particular time point. There is no memory. Uh, and only day one covariate has been taken into account, and the semi Markov uh, model is ongoing at this time. And Storda of Care was in favor of daily intubation in all the participant ICU, probably uh, decreasing the impact of corticosteroid therapy because corticosteroid therapy probably delayed the, 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 the requirement of invasive mechanical ventilation. In conclusion, considering available data, low-dose corticosteroid therapy should be included in the standard of care in ICU patients, but data about high-dose corticosteroid therapy, adverse events, long-term outcome are missing to really evaluate the magnitude and the potential heterogeneity of the corticosteroid effect. Thank you for attention.